Now in this lesson, I just want to talk a little bit about the pen tool in Photoshop. Now there are a number of different uses for the pen tool in many, many different scenarios. But in this particular video, I just want to talk about the pen tool as a selection tool. Now it's one of the most common uses of the pen tool, in fact, and then generating selections and they often get asked, when do I use the pen tool for, to generate a selection? Well, as I mentioned earlier in this course, that there are a number of different tools for generating selections in Photoshop. The reason there are so many different tools is that there are so many different images that you're gonna be wanting to create selections for, depending on what it is in the image you're trying to select. Now, the pen tool is vector-based. It uses vector technology to create very precise lines. There's no blurred lines, no soft edges or anything like that. It is very definite lines for a shape. And I often tell people, you'll want to use this when you're generating selections for things that have very clean, sharp edges. Now, in the case of this knife here, I, I wanted, let's just say I had this knife image and I wanted to go ahead and uh, extract a, a section of it or the whole thing. Well, I would probably go ahead and decide to use the pen tool in this case because it's got very clean, very sharp edges to it. No pun intended there because it's a knife. <laughs> However, I'm going to go over here into my toolbar and go and get the pen tool, which is located right here. And if you click on it, you'll notice you've got a number of different pen tools available. But we're going to use the standard pen tool in this case. And when you select it, I'm actually going to zoom in on the image here. And, and what you want to do, if at all possible, is start your selection at a corner point or any point where there's a turn or something like that. You don't really want to start it on the straight edge of an object unless there's no other choice. Now, in this case, we have a perfect starting point, which is the very tip of the blade here. So I'm actually going to click once and establish my first control point. Now when you go down, I'm actually going to move down a little bit, and as you use this tool, you'll start to get used to how it works. And I often tell people that it's really going to take some practice. This is one of the things that people don't really get past when they're learning the pen tool, is that it does take some practice and some getting used to. And one of the things you want to definitely want to avoid is to generate as, as few control points in your selection as possible, meaning you don't want to start a selection and then do this and create a segment every few pixels. This is just going to create a headache uh, for the editing process and is really not what the pen tool is really designed to do. Again, you want to have as few control points as possible. So you actually want to move down a quite a bit of ways and then you want to click and drag and this is going to bend the path as you see right there, allowing you to conform it to whatever shape you are selecting to. In fact, this blade, I'm just going to conform to that edge right there and then I'm just going to continue on to the next one and just kind of bend it a little bit this way. And again, this is one of those things where you get used to as you use this tool a little bit more. And I'm just going to move here and just click and drag here and then come to this point and just kind of curve that right there. Now when I get to the end here where I'm curving that slightly right there at that edge, when I go and continue, let's just say I wanted to extract the blade in this case, then I click here, it's going to bend outward a little bit because I dragged out that little control handle somewhat. To avoid that, I'm going to go ahead and hold down my option key and click once on there, and that's going to snap that handle back to that control point. And then I can just click and drag and then continue the path as I go here. Now again, those control handles, if I go and just add another one here, and I can stop. This is another beauty of the pen tool is that I can stop and actually go out here and grab this control handle and manipulate that curve anywhere I go. If I hold down the command key on Mac control on Windows, I can actually manipulate that curve as I go. So I can just tweak it a little bit as just on that little line there. And then if you hold down again the option key or command key, I'm just going to manipulate that curve there. I can bend it in and outward here. I can just kind of bring it in slightly right there and then continue on around the shape here. And, I, and if I see a curve ba element back further back, if I want to adjust it, I can go over here and do that just the same. And I can actually go and get the convert point tool, which is grouped in here with the pen tools, and actually manipulate these handles individually and adjust that curve accordingly. So I can get much more precise selections here. And this is what I mean about getting much more precise selections using the pen tool. But again, it does take some getting used to, getting used to how the, bear, the curves bend around, go to the shapes, and then just go like that. And you just continue around the shape. And not to worry if you'd miss something as you go, because you'll be able to come back and adjust it later. It's a vector piece. It's a piece of vector technology, so you can actually um, adjust it without um, worrying about loss of quality or anything like that. So now, let's just assume I've gone ahead and created that path, which I already have right here. I've got a path already created. And when you do create these segmented paths, 
they appear in the paths panel right here. Now the paths panel is located under the window menu here. You can select paths and it will appear. It's also by default grouped with the layer and channels pa uh, palettes as well. When you look at the um, icon here for the paths panel, the white area indicates the active area of your shape. It's a closed path, so it's an active area inside the white, and the gray area is the inactive area outside of the shape. So what I want to do is actually knock out the two holes in this blade here. So I'm going to use the same pen tool, but this time I'm going to use my Pathfinder features, which if I go up in the options bar, it's this first icon right here next to the word shape. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I'm subtracting from shape here. I'm going to go ahead and select that, and then go ahead and start drawing this path segment here around that inner hole. And I can adjust that later, so I'm just going to make my shape right away, and then like that. Now notice what's going on in that shape. Now it's a little hard to see, but if we just look right there, you can see this little area is knocked out of that um, selection. So it's basically subtracting that area in there, but I can also, because it's a path, I can actually go in here and use my direct selection tool and position or redistribute that path and adjust it. And again, as I mentioned, this is one of the beauties of this tool is that I can go back and manipulate this and do it much more precisely and it will always save that path right here. Now when I'm ready to go ahead and turn this into a selection, I'm in the paths panel, I can just simply um, click on the third icon over here, which is this little uh, dotted circle, and it will turn that active path, or that, yeah, that active path into an active selection. And then I can simply press Command or Control J, and it goes ahead and extracts it from that layer and gives me a nice clean extraction. Now, obviously I missed that other hole there, but I would have to adjust it. But even when you do that, even when you turn it into a selection, it still saves that original path and allows you to go back and manipulate it anytime you want. And this is just one of the many, many uses for the path tool and being able to create multiple uh, selected objects that you can turn into active selections and then go back and modify them anytime you want. And again, this is really for generating nice clean edge selections. So if you have an object that has nice clean edges, then the pen tool is going to be one of your best bets for getting an accurate clean extraction of the object.